and welcome back to the another episode of daily news analysis for IAS 2025. It is 8th August today and we are going to discuss these eight important articles which were in the, the Hindu newspaper. You know every day we upload two videos on this YouTube channel. In the first one which is this video we discuss the daily current news analysis. We discuss the important articles in the newspaper which are relevant for you. We try to break them into the simplest language possible so that it would be you know, easily available to you guys and it would be easy for you to understand those articles and take up the most uh, important information from them and pile up your preparation. And in the evening session we upload another video in which we discuss the daily uh, quiz. We discuss the questions related to the current affairs so that it will give you an idea how the questions could be framed from the current affairs and also it will help you you know it will help you revise your current affairs and also we take some previous year questions uh, in that uh, daily quiz so that it will give you the proper idea how do the questions come in the exam and what should be your approach while solving those questions so Without any delay, uh, we will start our discussion. But before we start, I would like to request you guys, please do subscribe the channel and share it with your friends. And please do watch the whole video because, you know, it will definitely benefit you. And, you know, please do write in the comments if any changes we should bring in our, in our teaching style. You know, before we start, let's look at the topics which we have to discuss today. The first one, which was the hot news uh, yesterday, the weight category in combat supports. Uh, what does it mean? You know, we had seen the case of uh, Vinish uh, Fogat. Uh, you know, she was disqualified because of because she missed 100 grams of weight. She was, you know, uh, wrestling in the 50 kgs weight category in the woman. So unfortunately, she was not able to maintain her weight uh, on the fight day. So she was disqualified by the by the uh, by the uh, authorities there <coughs> by united world wrestling they had disqualified her so with respect to this we will understand this way what this weight category is you know how it is used by different organizations we will go we will we will dip little little uh, deeper in it we'll uh, see how does it uh, uh, apply and we will look at different supports how they use it, different combat supports. Then after that, we will discuss about the uh, yen carry trade and its unwinding. We will see what is the concept behind it, what is the carry trade, what uh, what does yen has to do with it, yen the currency of Japan. We will discuss about it. After that, we will discuss about the work of board proposed amendments to the work of board. What is work of board? We will discuss about it. After that, we will discuss about the GST on insurance. You know, you would have seen if you had read the last uh, yesterday's newspaper, you would have seen this 18% GST on insurance and, you know, opposition parties were not happy with that. After that, we will discuss about the Supreme Court to review uh, Prevention of Money Laundering Act judgment, which they gave in 2022 about it, the bail in PMLA judgment. So they are going to review it. Uh, after 28th August. So we'll discuss about that. Then finally, we'll see some of the updates on the Bangladesh issue. Now, without any delay, let's look at the topic here. You know, before we understand this topic, I would uh, try to give you the different angle to it. Uh, I will try to explain you this in a different way. You know, when you are uh, uh, you are fighting you, when you are a supports person of any combat supports, maybe it karate, maybe mixed martial arts, maybe a wrestler or, uh, you know, or in jujitsu anywhere, you have different weight categories for that. Usually what the uh, athlete prefers, he prefers to fight in a weight category, which is way below than it is natural weight. And, you know, one interesting thing about it is, Usually, there are many critiques of this also that why fighters are allowed to uh, fight way below their uh, natural weight. You know, they are, it is often said that they, they become the weight bullies. You know, they fight in this uh, uh, weight category which is uh, below their natural weight so that they get this extra edge. You know, but this is very much allowed in the combat supports whether it would be Olympics or any other organization. 
so this is about this weight category you know uh, this you know for that for example if i am i will talk about myself if i am right now 75 kgs and i want to fight i will give you an example of ufc if you would had heard about the ufc organization you know for the mixed martial arts you know if i have to fight uh, in any weight category there i will definitely fight in 155 pounds weight category you know which which is very much near to my natural weight uh, which is approximately 70 kgs very much near to my natural weight so for that i have to cut the weight of 5 kgs on the day i have to scale up i have to show my weight uh, there is a scaling of the weight before our competition uh, before the competition uh, if on that day i am able to maintain my weight around 70 kgs then i would be allowed to fight or the, if i won't be if i won't be able to manage that weight then i would be disqualified or there would be some fine on me if it is some other organization for example if it, it is ufc then there would be some fine on me or they they would talk with my opponent if he will agree then my purse would be cut and some of the money would be given to him because ufc is an uh, private organization so it does not have that much uh, their rules are little bit different but if this match is for uh, uh, the championship then rules are very tight Simil similarly is the case with the uh, olympics here you know uh, the vinish forget you know she fights in the 50 kg weight categories and unfortunately you know earlier what used to happen matlab ki 2016 se pehle kya hota tha ki ek hi din mein pure fights hoti thi aur ek hi din mein hame pata chalta tha who is going to win the gold because they will fight the final game on that day itself aur usi din unko weight bhi dikhana hota tha on that day itself they have to scale up they have to show the weight to the uh, organization to the authorities and then they will be allowed to fight but after 2016 little there were little changes in the olympics you know this fighting used to happen in two days you know in on the first day few of the fights on the second day there would be other fights so with, with respect to that the wrestlers they have to cut weight twice if they were cutting the huge amount of weight then they have to cut weight twice so why they brought this uh, change because they knew that uh, there are uh, weight bullies uh, you know people call that the officials call call them Uh, unofficially that uh, there are people who fight in the less less you know lesser weight in the less lesser weight category than their natural weight to have this extra edge so to avoid this they maintain this fighting schedules for two days so that they it will hamper their decision same does happen it is impact was seen on this case of vinish forget when when last night she yesterday a day before yesterday she fought she maintained her weight and she scaled up she was 50 kg and she fought and she was about to reach the finals but on the second day when she again went to the scales she was 100 grams above and unfortunately on the second day only 15 minutes are given to you know to go and reassess the weight and she was not able to maintain this weight because of that she was disqualified so this is the uh, whole concept of weight category and weight cutting uh, with respect to the olympics and with respect to the another organizations uh, which deal with the combat sports i hope i was able to make it clear to you guys and another topic of this uh, discussion was algerian you know another uh, hot news from the olympics it was algerian uh, boxer namely iman khalif you know she was accused of uh, doing some uh, you know gender fraud that it was believed that she belongs to the xy chromosome and she is fighting in xx chromosome so what is xy chromosome and xx uh, chromosome usually women uh, with xx uh, you know usually women are with xx chromosome and men are with xy chromosome so if there is any presence of y chromosome in any uh, any uh, human being then they have the tendencies of having more testosterone and it is banned, it was banned under the international boxing association so this was the criteria to check whether a person is male or female but you know 
uh, you know, they have to check the chromosomes. But uh, uh, this International Boxing Association, they had banned her, this Algerian Iman Khalif, she, they had banned her. But unfortunately, the Olympics Committee, it has disqualified the International Boxing Association. And they allowed uh, Algerian Iman Khalif to fight in the Olympics. And she was able to do better as we saw the controversial uh, fight in that, which ended in just 45 seconds that the, her opponent was not able to compete with her. So then this news came in, into the market that she, she had done some gender fraud. But uh, you know, uh, Olympics had allowed her and she, you know, what Olympics uh, Association says that if your passport says you are a woman, then you are a woman. And you know, there, are, there was huge row on that it should not had been allowed because if anybody is having the X chromosome, then maybe, you know, she has some, uh, uh, you know, genetic defects, then there should be different weight category for them where they can fight, but they should not be allowed to fight in the woman's weight category because women's uh, physically men are superior, you know, physically, not mentally or any other way, physical build of men is way superior than women. They are physically st uh, stronger than women. So this has impacted the result of the boxing match, which we saw, which ended just in 45 seconds. So this was about this article. Uh, we added actually two articles with respect to the o Olympics. The first one, weight category issue, in which we saw that India's uh, dreams of gold were shattered when Vinish Fogart, she was disqualified. She's a great wrestler and, you know, uh, I wish her the best. I hope she goes to UFC and shines there because she has the potential to be the uh, world champion. And, you know, then we saw another article with respect to the Algerian Iman Khalif. So these were the two important uh, news uh, with respect to the Olympics, which I thought would be uh, important to share with you and explain a few points with respect to the weight cut and with respect to the gender fraud. Now moving forward to the article here, we have the Yan carry trade. You know it has, uh, why it is unwinding. Uh, let's imagine you are an investor. You are not just a simple investor that you are investing in India itself. You are investing in globally everywhere in wherever you want you have that potential you have that much money that you can invest in every country you want to so now there comes a condition there are two conditions you know when you will start investing in different countries you will find one thing few countries they charge you very less interest rate if you will borrow from them for example you will see japan if you will borrow from japan they will charge you very less interest rate. In fact, it was seen that uh, until recently, their, the interest rate they had charged it was in negatives. It was a minus 0.5. And recently, they had changed it to minus plus 0.5. Then it then increased it to 2.5, but within very short span of time. So remember this point. And another thing, there are countries which give you highest returns. For example, USA. If you will invest there, it will give you the highest return. Now, as an investor, if you are intelligent enough, what you will do? You will do one thing. You will borrow from Japan in yen and then invest it in USA. This is exactly what the carry trade is. You will borrow from the country which it gives you the less, in, from where you have, you have to give them the less interest rate and invest it in the country which will give you the highest returns. Now, why it is called yen in carry trade? Because it is with respect to the Japan, because their currency is yen, so it is respect to, with respect to the Japan. Now, why it is unwinding? As I told you earlier, that the Japan has started to show some changes in their interest rate. And if you are the investor, you have very keen look on these things. If you are an intelligent investor, you will look on everything the country is doing, the every change the countries are bringing in. And you are looking at this, that Japan is changing its interest rate. And also you are seeing that in USA, there are little changes in there, that uh, there are concerns of recession. And it is said that they are going to, uh, you know, decrease their interest rate. So as an investor, what do you think that you are going to get into the loss? So for that, what you do? 
you start to sell your instruments. That selling of the instruments is called the unwinding. So this is about the yen carry trade unwinding, which is recently happening because there has been changes in the interest rates from the Japan. They had recently changed it, and they and the investors are concerned that they should not carry it on further and it will impact their investment it will impact their profit and also they, there are concerns that us is uh, uh, facing recession and they may decrease the interest rate so which will definitely decrease the um, returns to the investor and because of this concern because of the concern of their profit loss they are uh, unwinding they are selling their instruments so this was about the yen carry trade unwinding Moving to the another article of today's discussion, it is about the work board. You know, if you were with me uh, last uh, night squeeze session, we discussed a question with respect to the work board. We saw it, how it was introduced, what is its status, and uh, what does it do. So, with respect to the work board, you know, uh, we have the yet, uh, you know, government is going to. Uh, gives, go for some amendments to this uh, work factor of 1995 yet the bill has not been introduced but it is expected to, to be introduced today and you know government has proposed 40 changes in this bill one of the changes is the name of the act it is going to be changed to united work management empowerment efficiency and development <coughs> act which was enacted in 1995 about what is work you know Wakf, they manage the assets of Muslim personnel. You know, uh, Muslims they donate to their assets to Wakf board, and they can manage and oversee it. And we should know that uh, they Wakf has the third highest amount of land under its management, which is 1.2 lakh uh, crores worth. And one important interesting thing about the Wakf board is uh, the dispute is that if the Wakf board lays their eyes on any land then that land belongs to them because uh, that personnel can't go to the Supreme Court because there is the tribunal in the work board they decided the case and it is largely expected that they will favor uh, the work board rather than any particular person and with respect to that there are many cases where this land has been taken uh, unevenly so there were lots of disputes with respect to the work board. You know, in work board, there is the work council, which is headed by the chairperson. The, uh, the chairperson is the money belongs to the minister of minorities. In the work board, there are many other issues also. You know, there is no representation of women uh, in state level. There is no representation of certain sections of Muslims. And <coughs> government is going to make certain changes more than 40 changes are proposed uh, this is yet to be introduced but and one more thing interesting thing you should note about it that they are going to introduce this in the Rai Sabha why they are going to introduce this in Rai Sabha because Lok Sabha is uh, you know Rai Sabha is a permanent house and Lok Sabha who disqualify me with Malapya elections ki wajah se both sari changes aati hai so they prefer to bring this in the Rai Sabha they want to find the proper solution to it about the changes in the work of board first the name itself was changed to the united is proposed to be changed to united work management empowerment efficiency and development second the representation of women would be given in it third in the council the, there would be three ministries ministers two from lok sabha and one from Rai sabha <coughs> fourth district collector will take over the dispute of land it is not, not the tribunal now now the district collector will take the dispute of the land he will take over the dispute of the land and there are concerns that the district collector may be biased but that would be discussed later fifth what are the, whatever the land uh, the work board is having right now they have to create the database for it so to show the transparency in it and also they have to show the uh, for example they are uh, getting profit in any land or anywhere they have to show to the government for what they are going to utilize that profit so this is a little bit about the work board I, this was uh, you know the important information about a work board which i thought is necessary for you to understand you know yet uh, today this bill may be 
uh, introduced in the Rajya Sabha and much more would be known about it. I hope I was able to make you understand this and let's move to the another article getting distracted by the call so i hope i was able to make you understand and uh, the important points about the work board now moving to the another article it is about the gst on insurance you know we had seen that how opposition or <coughs> opposition in the parliament they are uh, you know uh, against their uh, against the GST on the uh, on the insurance which is 18 percent so <coughs> so they are protesting against it so with respect to that the finance ministry has come up with their argument let's discuss what it is you know uh, about the GST on insurance earlier uh, there was when there was no GST Earlier, it was on, on insurance. It was only services tax, and it was uh, pro, it was only 50, it was uh, only 15 percent was it was only 15 percent was uh, uh, service tax of 15 percent was applicable, and from the 2017 it was uh, included as uh, insurance was included in the GST, and uh, this uh, tax was increased from 15 percent to 18 percent. And you know now the opposition leaders earlier what uh, it uh, administered from the uh, uh, from the uh, government itself he made certain comments with respect to, to the GST on insurance because he said that it should not be there because it is very much uncertain. So why why to go for this GST? With respect to that there were certain uh, you know issues with it as we had seen uh, when there is a rise in the GST and the prices of the products uh, uh, in the insurance will be higher it will lead to the inflation as we had seen inflation in the health sector which has also led to the premier prices a little bit higher and insurance companies have increased the price of the premium because of the inflation in the health sector prices of the products that has increased and the finance it was the question was asked to the finance ministry she said that state government uh, you know earlier when there was no gst when it was only service taxes then the service state government also used to impose the tax uh, and earn money from uh, from it but after the gst came we have to share this tax with the state government so we cannot remove the gst right now and second thing they said that that this GST of 18% can be cannot be changed uh, by finance act because decision lies with the GST council and in the GST council there are states also which are part of the GST council so it is the core decision of the GST council who has to take this decision of uh, ending this GST on insurance so this was a little article about it I hope uh, it is not that much complicated for you uh, I hope I was able to make you understand this now moving to the another article uh, of today's discussion it is about the supreme court review uh, prevention of money laundering act uh, judgment you know uh, these i had clubbed two articles basically in this uh, in the first one it is about the uh, supreme court showing its uh, uh, supreme court uh, is unhappy with the convention rate under a pmla you know in the last 10 years <coughs> from 2014 to 2024 more than 50 cases were filed under PMLA and unfortunately only 40 cases got the convention. So conviction. So with this the Supreme Court judge raises concerns with respect to it and Supreme Court said that ED which is the prime you know who who acts on the PMLA enforcement directorate said that enforcement directorate has to change its approach you know they don't only have to depend on the statement of the witness but they have to go for the scientific methodology of collecting of the proof and by which they can either reduce this uh, uh, you know cases filed or increase the conviction rate so this is about uh, why supreme court is unhappy with it and another uh, main topic which is the supreme court you know which is, uh, with respect to the bail in under the pmla we should know that under pmla there is section 45 it talks about anybody arrested 
the court should not provide bail to the accused if they, anybody is arrested under PMLA. He should not be provided bail under certain uh, extreme conditions. And also in this, it is said that the public prosecutor should always be heard with respect to this. You know, for courts to provide the bail, the, this act to provide is the twin test uh, or the two conditions that courts have to apply. The first one, accused is not uh, guilty. The courts feel that the accused is not guilty. <clears throat> then they can grant the bail. And also, the accused is not likely to commit any offense on bail. Then only they can grant the bail. But So the, what does this have impact on the accused? That it is the burden of proof lies on the accused, not the authorities who, who arrest them. So it gets very difficult for them to get any bail. And also in 2017, uh, then when this, uh, you know, came, when this judgment came, when this uh, law came in 2017 Supreme Court struck it down called them as unconstitutional Supreme Court in 2017 called it un unconstitutional you know <coughs> in, in and the case was uh, Nikesh Tarachand Shah versus Union of India in 2017 in which the Supreme Court called these uh, this burden of proof on accused as unconstitutional but this case in the 2018 government of India brought up the Finance Act of 2018, uh, 2018 where they reintroduced these provisions in that Finance Act and the petitioners went to the Supreme Court. But in this, uh, the case name is Vijay Mandal Choudhury versus Union of India. The Supreme Court favored the government of India. Supreme Court upheld the uh, this uh, uh, this you know judgment of the Supreme Court said that uh, uh, what government of India has brought uh, in the final sector of 2018 is very much constitutional. So it was upheld by three judge bench of the Supreme Court. Now uh, after many pleas in the Supreme Court, the Supreme Court has finally agreed to review this 2022 judgment, which is uh, Mandal Chaudhary versus Union of India, where they are going to review it and give the final verdict with respect to that. So it was about the Supreme Court to review PMLA judgment. Now, uh, there are a few smaller articles, you know, which I forgot to mention. First one, it is about the Rashtriya Vigyan Puraskar. You know, we had seen that <coughs> Chandrayaan 3 team, Chandrayaan 3, the team would be given award in the Vigyan team. You know, there are different categories in the Rashtra Vigyan Puraskar, for example, Vigyan Ratnas, Vigyan Shri, Vigyan Yuva and Vigyan team. And in the Vigyan team, they would be given this Puraskar, they would be given this award. And in this, there is no monetary price, but only the certificates would be issued. And also, with respect to Bangladesh, there are a few uh, developments. We had seen that today, Muhammad Yunus, uh, the, uh, the Nobel Prize winner, he will take an oath today as a caretaker government and also the uh, you know uh, the opposition leaders uh, which were in the earlier government they are uh, uh, hoping that the government will uh, very soon go for the elections and <coughs> and Bangladesh will go for the directly elected government you know which will suit the democracy of that country so this was about today's discussion I hope uh, I was able to Con convey my information, convey this information to you guys, and I hope you, I was able to make you understand these topics. Let's have a final look what we discussed today. The first article which we discussed it was about the Vinesh Pogat disqualification. It was about the weight category and combat supports, how the athletes uh, try to, uh, you know. Uh, get some benefits by uh, by fighting in the lower weight categories but same thing becomes very uh, difficult for them to cut the weight for that weight category and with respect to that how Vinish forgot missed her weight after that we discussed about the uh, gender uh, you know fraud in uh, Olympics as it is said uh, we saw that Algerian Iman Khalif how she fought with a uh, fighter and that fight ended with an 45 seconds so we discussed about it in detail after that we discussed about the young trade uh, young carry trade unwinding why it is unwinding we saw we discussed what is the young carry trade uh, <coughs> why are investors uh, 
selling their instruments in it we discussed it in detail after that we discussed about the work board what the uh, changes which the government is going to make in the work board uh, 40 proposed changes we and we are going to discuss we discussed them already and we are going to discuss this or this uh, article uh, would definitely come in the next few days so we will discuss it in more detail after that we discussed it about the gst on insurance and finally we discussed it about the supreme courts uh, about the pmla judgments uh, review uh, and the uh, the judgment which basically is about the bail conditions under pmla and also supreme court being unhappy with the convention conviction rate under pmla so finally we discussed about the uh, the rashtriya vigyan uh, Puraskar, uh, you know, the awards given to the scientists for their uh, uh, contribution in science, and finally, and also we discussed about the development in Bangladesh where Muhammad Yunus to take an oath today as a caretaker uh, PM. Uh, so this was for today's discussion. I hope you would like the video, and I hope you would share it with your friends. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you very much.